Beyblade Burst Dynamite ended last month, and with any Beyblade series, there are always Beyblades that are loved, and Beyblades that are hated. So in today's video, I am going to rank every single Dynamite Beyblade. I created a poll asking you guys to vote on which Dynamite Beyblade was your favorite. We got around 5,500 votes, and today, I am going to go over the results. But before we start, I kind of want to play a game with you guys. Here are three scales with three different Dynamite Beyblades on them. If you guess which Beyblade weighs the most, you win. But if you get it wrong, you're going to have to subscribe. I'll give you some time to think. Alright, so the fattest Dynamite Beyblade here is Savior Valkyrie, weighing in at around 74.37 grams. Roar Bahamut weighs around 73.78 grams, and Greatest Raphael is around 73.21 grams. Anyway, if you got it wrong, welcome to the Weirdest Beyblade channel on YouTube, and if you got it right, we'll, we'll get you next time. Anyway, let's start this Dynamite Beyblade ranking. In last place, we have Dynamite slash Savior Perseus with only 36 votes, which is like 0.7%. Now, I actually really like Perseus. It's one of the heaviest Dynamite chips, and I think it just has a really nice design. I also like how they later incorporate it with the bearing driver in the Savior layer, but I will admit it is the Dynamite Beyblade with the least amount of personality. It never appeared in the anime, and I mean the original release didn't even have a stock combo. I'm actually surprised that 36 people chose it as their favorite Dynamite Beyblade because there are just so many better options. Next, ranking in 11th place, we have Dynamite Belial with 142 votes. Now, the pre-evolutions of Beyblades with mid-season evolutions tend to be overshadowed by their upgraded counterparts, so it makes sense why Dynamite Belial ranks this low. Also, in my opinion, it doesn't really have that great of a design, it looks like a lazy black version of Valkyrie. Speaking of Valkyrie, in 10th place we have Savior Valkyrie with 160 votes. That was a great transition. Anyway, just like Belial, kind of outclassed by Ultimate Valkyrie in almost every way, Valkyries tend to be pretty popular though, but this Valkyrie is probably one of the worst Valkyries out there. It's just terrible. It comes with a shot driver, which, while cool, is so unpredictable in battle. Actually, I, actually, I take that back. It's not cool, it sucks, and that's why it's in 10th place. In 9th place, we have a Beyblade that I was not expecting to rank this low. With only 219 votes, we have Dangerous Belial. This is the main protagonist Beyblade, guys. And I don't understand why it's so low. It has some really awesome gimmicks. Its layer features rubber, it has a bound attack, and an interesting driver. It's also not that bad in battle, nice, but I guess bro. people just don't like Belial, and I have no idea why. So I went and asked my Discord server why, and this is what they said. It's fat and ugly. <laughs> Ouch, guys. Next up, in 8th place, we have the main antagonist of the series, Greatest Raphael, with 277 votes. Greatest Raphael has a very intricate gimmick, which gives the illusion of a halo over the Beyblade mid-battle. It's a really interesting ability, but it is quite gimmicky and tends to hurt the Beyblade in battles. Not only that, while in the anime the Beyblade is crazy strong, the owner Rashad isn't the most popular character, and because of those problems, this Beyblade only ranks in 8th place. 7th place, we have Roar Bahamut with 336 votes. I actually love Roar Bahamut. I think its design is beautiful. I love the pink. The Beyblade is just great in real life. And overall, it's just a really solid Beyblade. I can't really think of anything wrong with, well, maybe, maybe the moment driver can sometimes be unpredictable. But besides that, this Beyblade does everything right. Now, even so, the reason I think it only ranks in 7th place is because the next 6 Beyblades 
are just that great. They're all super popular, iconic Beyblades that most fans tend to love, and while Bahamut is still a fan favorite, I feel like throughout the years, it's kind of lost its hype. Originally, everyone loved Arc Bahamut and its original owner, Boa, but then in GT, we got Dread Bahamut with Blind as its owner, and I don't think he won one battle in all of his appearances. And now we have the new owner of Bahamut, Bashara, and while I love the guy, he's still not as great as Boa in my opinion. On to 6th place, we have Prominence Phoenix with 375 votes. For years, people have been wanting an evolution to Phoenix, and we finally got it in the Dynamite series. The original Phoenix had the ability to release its armor mid-battle and use it as a weapon, and this Phoenix is no different. Not only that, in the anime, its owner's name is Pain. Flippin' Pain, guys, and so far, he seems like a pretty fierce opponent. Now, the thing I think that holds Prominence Phoenix from not ranking any higher on this list is probably its performance in real life. While the layer isn't terrible, the parts on Prominence aren't too good. The Universe Driver and Taper Disc are not only unoriginal parts, but also not that competitive. I feel like if they gave this Phoenix some new driver or Metal Atomic, this Beyblade would be even more popular. In the number 5 spot, we have a Beyblade I was not expecting to see here. Next up, we have Vanish Fafner with 395 votes, barely beating out Prominence Phoenix. Fafner is usually one of the most popular Beyblades in every series, so to see it only rank in 5th place is surprising to say the least. And don't get me wrong, 5th place is great, but for Fafner, I'm not so sure. And I think the reason why it ranks so low is that it doesn't really do anything different from past Fafners. Its main gimmick is that it has rubber and it's steel spin, just like all four Fafners before it. It doesn't really add anything new or interesting interesting to the Beyblade. Maybe the fact that the whole ring is rubber, but let's be honest, like the whole ring on like Wizard and Mirage were also rubber and they just didn't bend like that. <laughs> anyway, while spin stealing was cool back in the Evolution series, now it kind of just seems like an overplayed gimmick. Next in fourth place is another Beyblade. That surprised me, but this time it's a good thing. With 425 votes ranking above Fafner, we have Cyclone Ragnarok. Oh my goodness, guys, Ragnarok ranked above Fafner. That's crazy. <laughs> I was not expecting Cyclone Ragnarok to rank this high, but the more I think about it, the more it makes sense. Ragnarok Beyblades are usually not that popular because of their terrible burst resistance and performance in real life. However, Cyclone Ragnarok is the closest Ragnarok has ever gotten to being good. While the Beyblade does burst every now and then, it doesn't burst nearly as much as past Ragnaroks. Mix that with the Heavy Giga Disc and the Stamina Driver Never, this Beyblade can be considered one of the better Dynamite Beyblades competitively, which is not something I thought I would ever say about a Ragnarok. Also, the design in my opinion is the best Ragnarok has looked in years. Now we are on to the top three. These three Beyblades alone made up more than 50% of the votes. In third place, we have... Guilty Longness with 511 votes. This Beyblade is absolutely dominant in real life, guys. I think it's the best dot combo Beyblade ever released. It's just so powerful. Not only can you use any weight on the layer, the layer and chip also have metal infused in it, making the Beyblade layer extremely heavy. The layer is also very sloped to allow this Beyblade to perform the most ridiculous upper attacks, leading to crazy collisions in battle. The Disc Karma, while not the best Dynamite Disc by any means, does get its job done, and the Driver Metal Destroy is such a consistent and balanced attack driver. It's not too aggressive to where the Beyblade immediately runs out of stamina or is too wild, but it's also not too passive to the point where it struggles to get hard hits as an attack type. It hits the perfect balance, and when mixed with Guilty Longness, this Beyblade is virtually unstoppable. 
The Beyblade also has the reputation and prestige of being part of the Longness line, one of the most beloved Beyblade lines in all of Beyblade. Now, although this Beyblade is great, there are still two more Beyblades that ranked above it. Taking the silver medal with 819 votes, which, by the way, is more than 300 votes more than Guilty Longness, we have, of course, Astral Spriggan. Astral Spriggan is everything you want in a Spriggan. It's a dual rotation Beyblade with a flippable layer, allowing you to choose between a Requiem-esque version or a Legend-esque version. Now, this was present in World Spriggan as well, but unlike World Spriggan, there is a fairly noticeable difference between both modes. The light mode has rubber, while the dark mode has metal. And although it doesn't really make a difference because technically both modes have rubber and metal because, you know, they're part of the same layer, just having the separation brings so much more personality to the different modes that wasn't present in World Spriggan or really any past Spriggan before it. The Beyblade is also a callback to the most popular Spriggan Beyblade released, Spriggan Requiem. It's just a complete upgrade of that Beyblade. Not only is the layer dual rotation with rubber and metal, it also comes with the Overdisc, one of the heaviest discs in the Dynamite series that bears a strong resemblance to the Zero Disc released on Spriggan Requiem. The driver as well Quattro is just an upgraded version of Zeta. While Zeta only features three completely plastic mediocre modes, Quattro features four that infuse rubber and metal. This Beyblade is just insane and has so much potential, and to think there is actually a Beyblade that ranked higher than it. This Beyblade didn't even get number one, guys. Heck, it lost by almost 1,000 votes. With 1,801 votes, taking a whole 32.2% of all the votes, we have Ultimate Valkyrie. There are just no words to describe how amazing this Beyblade is. Takara Tomi has been releasing Beyblade products for almost seven years now, and I bet some kids playing with Beyblades now haven't even reached that age. And through it all, Valkyrie has been the main figurehead for the whole Burst series. While we've had different protagonists throughout the years, Bolt and Valkyrie have always made a return and played a major role in each series. This Beyblade includes callbacks to every past series, even the manga. It includes callbacks to the single layer Valkyrie, the dual layer Victory Valkyrie, the God Beyblade Strike God Valkyrie, the Chosy Beyblade Winning Valkyrie and Chosy Valkyrie, the GT Beyblade Slash Valkyrie, and the Sparking Beyblade Brave Valkyrie. This Beyblade Ultimate Valkyrie is a celebration of not only all past Valkyries, but all past generations of the Burst series. And it's weird to say, but in all seriousness guys, Beyblade has really changed my life. I wouldn't be here making videos like this if it wasn't for the Burst series. And having a Beyblade like Ultimate Valkyrie just reminds me of all the past memories I've had over the years with these spinning tops. And I'm sure a lot of other people feel the same way. And because of that, Ultimate Valkyrie has dominated this poll and safely secured the title of the best Dynamite Beyblade. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. If you guys want to see more ranking videos like this, or maybe even like tier list videos, leave a like and comment on what video you guys want to see next. Anyway, that's it for this one. Peace.